This is Old Red, my Crane Rover for playing Scrapyard. Scrapyard is a custom scenario published by Splitzy that uses a number of mods to create a unique gameplay style that requires engineers to approach the game in a totally different way. By limiting what blocks can be built, it makes finding and retrieving blocks from abandoned settlements the only way to acquire better technology. So, in this video, I'll show you how to build a simple crane like this, get it set up using the park script so that you can use it in your scrapyard world or whatever else you might want to crane for. For this tutorial, I will be using my spawn rover to put the crane on. As you can see, I've already installed a simple downrigger mechanism for stabilizing the rover when lifting heavy loads. If you want to see how I set that up, it'll be at the end of the video. I've also expanded the chassis a bit to give more room for cargo in the back and made a conveyored base upon which I will be putting the crane. The finished crane will consist of a base rotor, a base hinge, two pistons, an elbow hinge, two more pistons, two hinges, and a rotor for the wrist articulation with a mag plate on the end. The first part that goes on is the base rotor. You can choose between either the regular rotor or the small advanced rotor. Because I may want this to be conveyored, I'm going to use the small advanced rotor. You don't necessarily have to weld up the rotor parts or the piston heads or the hinge parts, but for it to be conveyored, you do have to, so I will. Next is the hinge, but because I want the base of the crane to be able to depress lower than flat, I'm actually going to put a conveyor corner on it first. These two white marks here indicate the negative direction of the hinge. So because I want negative to be down, I will orient it like this. Blow those up. Next are the two pistons. Next is the hinge for the elbow. Again, I will use a curved conveyor here so that it can fold back on itself. The hinge will go with the two white marks pointing back toward the rover. To put the rest of the pistons on, I'm going to rotate this hinge up. Two more pistons. For the wrist, I will do another hinge for up and down, one for left and right, and an advanced rotor on the end for rotating the hinge. And lastly, a mag plate for the crane to lock onto something. So that's it. The crane is now fully assembled. Now we need to name all of the parts and then get them set up in the script. I am a bit neurotic about naming things, so I'm going to make sure everything is named very clearly. I'm going to use Build Vision to change the name on the blocks. This makes it very easy, so I can just look directly at the block I want to interact with. Hold Control and scroll down. Then you can scroll up and down to change the different things. I'll click on Name, press Enter to change the name of the block, and then this will be Crane S01 Base Rotor. If for some reason you're playing and you don't have Build Vision installed, I would recommend that you name the blocks as you place them. That will make it a lot easier to keep track of which piston or which hinge is which. This part is pretty boring, so I'll just take care of this real quick. So that is now all of the blocks named. The names don't really matter. All they do is help you keep track of which one is where. A couple things I want to adjust. First, we'll take a look at the base rotor. As you can see, there are a handful of settings in here. Shirt, inertia tensor, rotor lock, torque, braking torque, velocity. We will adjust some of these for the best experience with the crane. The inertia tensor setting equalizes the virtual masses of connected grids to achieve more stable behavior. Now that is best only applied to all of the subgrid parts downstream from the first link because that will share the mass of just these additional connected subgrids and not the main grid, in this case being the rover. So on the stage one rotor, we will leave that unchecked. On the stage two, we will check it, check it all the way down to the end. That is my recommended settings for inertia tensor. For the torque setting, the base rotor has a lot less available torque and it needs all of the torque that you can give it. So I would set the torque to max and the braking torque to max. The braking torque is the torque applied to hold the rotor still when the rotor block is either turned off or the whole grid is unpowered. We will leave the velocity at zero. The limits will stay at zero. I'll set the rotor displacement to max just so it has the most clearance. Next is the base hinge. 
inertia tensor is on. For torque, I will set this to max also because this hinge will be doing the most work for lifting loads. Hinges can have a max torque of 1000 mega newtons, which is 1000 times stronger than the rotor. For braking torque, I will also set that to max so that in case the rover runs out of power, the crane won't collapse down. The velocity is zero, limits at default. For the pistons, they of course have inertial tensor on. Velocity, you can just leave a default. Maximum minimum settings, leave a default. For the max impulse axis and max impulse non-axis, for the most part, you can just leave those at default. But if you do have issues with the pistons not retracting when they're supposed to, you can try increasing those. Same with the stage four piston, just leave that as it is. The stage five elbow hinge, I'm again going to set the torque to max and set the braking torque to max, set the velocity to zero. Lower and upper limits can stay at default. Again, we'll leave the arm pistons alone. And for the wrist hinges, I will set the torque to max, but I will set the braking torque to only 1000. Same on the stage nine hinge. And for the stage 10 rotor, I will set its torque to max and its braking torques to 1000. Now, the reason that I've set lower braking torques on the wrist parts is so that you can actually turn off the two hinges and the rotor and actually hang something off of the end of the crane. It gives you the option for it to kind of dangle, which could be useful in some instances. First, I need to get a programmable block put back on. I will be using the park script. So I will go ahead and just add park to the name of all of the parts I will be using with the script. The next step is to add the park script to the programmable block. Search park, add that in there. You can see that the first thing that pops up when you add the script to the programmable block is the error saying that there is no group with the name park. So what we will do is we will search all of the park parts. It says ensure you have all blocks you wish to control under this group and recompile. So we need to make a new group called park and that will include the buggy cockpit that I will control the crane from and all of the hinges and rotors and pistons that will be controlled by the Energy script. Critical. Okay, the group is now made. I've recompiled, the script appears to be happy. It is giving you a warning saying that the buggy cockpit is set to control thrusters and wheels. That won't be a problem because when I'm using the crane, I will make sure that the parking brake is set and that the downrigger is locked. The next thing to do is to add additional profiles for the crane modes. By default, there is a single main mode. I will add an arm mode and a wrist mode. That is done just by adding the names of the additional modes into the custom data of the programmable block that Park is loaded on. I'll hit recompile. And now if you look at any of the crane parts in the custom data, you will see that the custom data has been updated with multiple fields, one for each crane profile. The first is the main profile, second is the arm profile, and third is the wrist profile. What this is, is essentially just a way for you to set up what this part will do when this mode is activated and you press any of these keys. And by default, everything is zero which means this part won't be affected by those keys. So when you're sitting in the cockpit, forward will be the W key, backward will be the S key, so on and so forth. The way I like to use it is to have distinct control modes for each of the main different parts of the crane. So the main mode will be for the base control, the arm mode will be for the arm control, and the wrist mode will be for the wrist control. So the base rotor I will include in the main profile. That means that when the main profile is active, I want the base rotor to move with left and right. So that will be left will be a negative value. And for this, I'll just use negative three RPM and right will be three RPM. Save that. For the base hinge, for the main profile, I want up to be three RPM and down to be negative three RPM. So now when I press the space bar, the whole crane will lift up. And when I press the C key, the whole crane will go down. Next are the two base pistons. For these, when I press forward, I want them to have, I want them to extend. So I'll give them 0.5 meters per second. And when I press the backward key, they will have a velocity of negative 
And I will just copy this for the second base piston. Paste it in there. For the elbow hinge, I want that to be active when the arm mode is active. So for the arm mode, I will give it an RPM of 3 for up, and an RPM of negative 3 for down. And then for the two arm pistons, for the arm mode, I will give them a velocity of 0.5 for forward and negative 0.5 for backward. And copy paste that to the second piston. For the wrist hinge, I want those to be active with the wrist profile. Up will be 3 RPM, down will be negative 3 RPM. So the second wrist hinge, left will be negative and right will be positive. And for the wrist rotor, I actually want that to use the roll right and roll left keys. So roll left will be positive three and roll right will be negative three. That is all it takes to set up the custom data for the parts themselves. Now we will go back to the programmable block and hit recompile again. That will mean that the script has now saved all of the settings that we put into the custom data. If you make any other changes to the custom data, make sure you recompile the script again so that the changes take effect. Now, the last step is to add the park commands to the hotbar. And to do this, we'll pull up the G menu and type in P-A-R-K, find the programmable block and drag it to the hotbar with the option of run. That will bring up a dialog to type in the argument that you want to use. The argument for the first one I will use is enable. That will turn on the control for the script. And the second one I will add is disable. That will turn off the control of the script. So when I click enable, you'll be able to move it. When I click disable, you will not be able to move it, which is a great idea to use if you're going to be controlling the crane from the same seat that you drive the vehicle in. Next, I will add a few more arguments. The first is main for controlling the base of the crane arm for controlling the arm of the crane, and wrist for controlling the wrist of the crane. Two more commands that I like to use that are completely optional is MULT, M-U-L-T, space one, and MULT two. What that does is applies a multiplier to the script. So all of the velocities and RPMs that we put into the custom data are applied at either one X or two X of what is specified in the custom data. That also worked with decimals, so you can run 0.25, for example, if you want it to go even slower. So now we are ready to use the crane. I'll hit enable, four to activate the base controls, space, lifts it up, left and right, turns it around, five activates the arm controls, C brings it down, W and S extend and retract, then I'll activate the wrist controls with six, left and right moves the wrist left and right, space and C, lift and lower the wrist, and Q and E, rotate the rotor at the end. Now I'll give it a try, lift up this dead ship. Because we may be lifting heavy blocks, the first thing that a good crane rover needs is a downrigger for locking the vehicle down to the ground to avoid tipping over when lifting heavy things. So I'll cover how to set up a fairly simple downrigger. First I will put the piston here toward the middle, put the mag plate on the end of the piston, going to add a timer block to extend and retract downrigger and a button panel to activate it. Next, I will name it Rigger Piston, Rigger Mag Plate, Rigger Timer Block, Rigger Button Panel. Button Panel will trigger the timer block. The timer block will reverse the piston, unlock the mag plate. I'm going to adjust the maximum extension on the piston. First, I will set it to zero, set the speed to positive, and then slowly increase the maximum distance until it just barely touches. So the maximum distance for the piston will be one meter. Now when we press the button, it just extends and retracts the downrigger. 
So that's about it for building a crane with the park script. A crane is an absolute necessity when playing on the scrapyard, and the park script just makes it so much nicer to use. This finished rover here will be posted on the workshop, so you can take a look at it if you want to refer to any of the settings. I will be doing another video on scrapyard and which mods I think make nice additions to it, so if you're interested in that, be sure to catch that one. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.